Hello folks, today we are going to be doing the 40s out of your unit pack which are going to involve learning how to name two different types of compounds. I like to start with having you pull out your uh, periodic table. I want to show you a few things at the very top. If you don't know your Roman numerals very well, uh, we do have them on the top of your periodic table for you. In the very first column we have Roman numeral 1 right there. Second column, we have Roman numeral 2. We go all the way over to the other side where we have the three positive charges, and we have Roman numeral 3. We have Roman numeral 4 in the column that's got a 4 positive or a 4 negative charge. And then we have Roman numeral 5, and my screen's a little bit too big, but we have Roman numeral 6, 7, 8, and 9 on the other side of that. So now we're on page 40, and we're going to go over the two naming cases that we're going to cover today. The first one you've already done on another worksheet. Um, on the very top we have case A, and it says the first element is a metal, and the second element is a uh, non-metal. The thing that's special about the metal is it only has one charge. That charge could be a 1 two, or three, or maybe some other number, but it only has one particular charge for that metal. And then again, the second element is any non-metal. What we do is we write the name of the metal, and then the second thing that we do is we write the name of the non-metal with an IDE ending. So we'll go right to this one since we've already done problems like this. Um, the very first element is rubidium, that is element 38. And then for the second element, we have element 34, which is selenium. So you write the name of the metal, and then you write the name of the non-metal with an IDE ending, so that would be selenide. Stop the video and try this one next. Okay, in this problem right here, we have barium, which is element 56. And we have phosphorus, which is element 15. So just like the instructions say, we write the name of the metal, barium. We write the name of the non-metal, but with an IDE ending, phosphide. So now we're going to go to the case that's slightly more difficult. In this problem, or in this case, the first element is a metal with multiple charges in the box. And the second element is any non-metal. There are four steps. Write the name of the metal and include a parenthesis for future placement of a Roman numeral. Write the name of the non-metal with an IDE ending. Mathematically, number three, mathematically determine the charge of the metal from the charge of the non-metal. And then number four, write the positive charge of the metal as a Roman numeral. So what we are talking about are metals with multiple charges in the box or in their element box. So if we look right here, we have a 2 positive or a 3 positive to pick from. We now have a skill to figure out which one it is. So let's do some examples on this next page. So like the directions say, uh, write the name of the metal, iron. Place a parenthesis and then write the non-metal with an IDE ending. So Br is element 35, and that wouldn't be bromine anymore. It'd be called bromine. At the top of the column of bromide, there is a one negative, meaning bromides are going to be a one negative in charge. But there are three of them, so that means the total charge on the bromides are three negative. Chemical compounds must always be neutral, so that means that the iron must have to be a 3 positive to balance it out. There's only one iron, so we would call this iron 3 for the charge that the iron must have to neutralize or to balance out the bromides. So this is iron 3 bromide. We're going to do the next iron one as well. So again, I follow the instructions. I write the name of the top, or the uh, metal, excuse me. I write iron. I put a parenthesis, 
And Br again is element 35, that is bromide. Bromide has a one negative charge, but there are two of them, so that's a two negative charge. The Fe must balance that out, so it must be a two positive charge to bring it all to zero. There's only one Fe, so that Fe must be the two positive. So right now, take a minute or two and look at these two problems. One is iron 3 and one is iron 2 bromide. And notice the differences. We're next going to do one of the vanadium compounds. So right here we have vanadium. This is the one that we're going to look at. In this problem, vanadium is element 23, so we write vanadium. Put a parenthesis. Nitrogen turns into nitride. Nitrogen, element 7, uh, turns into nitride, and it has a charge of 3 negative. But there's 5 of them, so that's 15 negative total. Vanadium must be equal to 15 positive to balance that out so the net charge is 0. But there's three of these vanadiums. So what must each vanadium be to get up to 15? Well, 15 divided by 3 is a 5. So vanadium is a 5 positive, and its Roman numeral would be a 5. So this would be vanadium 5 nitride. Try V3 and 4 now on your own. So pause the video. Try it on your own. See how you do, and then watch me solve it. In this problem, we write the name of the metal, vanadium. We put a parenthesis, and the nitrogen, which is element 7, turns into nitride. So now we have vanadium, parenthesis, nitride. Nitride has a charge of 3 negative, but there are 4 of them, so that is a 12 negative. The vanadiums all together then have to equal a 12 positive to balance out that 12 negative. There are 3 of those vanadiums, so what must the charge of each vanadium be to get to this 12 positive? In this instance, you could, could take 12 and divide it by 3 and get 4. So each one would have to be a 4 positive. 3 times 4 positive equals 12 positive. So this would be vanadium 4 nitride. We're next going to do this problem right here. So stop the video and give it a try. In this problem, we write the name of the metal, copper. Put a parenthesis. Write the name of the nonmetal with an I-D-E ending, oxide. Oxygen, element number 8, has a 2 negative at the top of its column. So that's what oxygen is. There's only one oxygen in this case. Copper must, therefore, be a 2 positive to balance it out. So that makes copper a copper 2 oxide. So CuO is copper 2 oxide. Stop the video and try this problem next. In this problem, we write the name of the metal, copper. We put a parenthesis, we write oxide. In this problem, we have one oxygen with a two negative charge. That means the coppers must be a two positive charge, but there's two of those coppers. So that means each copper must be a copper one oxide. On this slide, you can see that we have copper two oxide and copper one oxide. 
and they physically look different from each other. So it might think that there's not much of a difference between copper 2 and copper 1 oxide, but they physically look different. This is another example with copper and chlorine or chloride. Again, we have copper 1 chloride looking completely different than copper 2 chloride. You should now have all the skills to do the back side of this sheet. Thanks for tuning in.